Hello. Okay, I think we're live. Um, welcome to, oh, camera's up there. <laughs> welcome to my August edition of the Goodreads live stream where I'm going to take the next like hour and a half, maybe two hours, uh, just to organize some of my Goodreads shelves. I'm going to be decluttering my want to read shelf. That's what I've been doing the past few times. Um, I do have a video linked down in the description box that explains my really overly complicated Goodreads shelving system. Um, so if you need a better understanding of like what my shelves are, you can always watch that video. But yeah, I, um, I think without further ado, I'm just going to get started so I can get through as many of these books as possible. Uh, I am monitoring the chat, so feel free to chime in and let me know if you guys have read any of these books. If you think that I, I should also read them, if you didn't like them, always welcome any opinions. And if you're not watching this live, you can also leave those sorts of opinions in the comment section. I hope you guys are having a good week so far and let's get started. All right. Hello, Serene Christine. Welcome to the chat. All right, let's go to my bookshelves. Oh, I just, I don't know if you guys could hear that when I, my neck cracked really loud. Is it going? Okay. So the last time we did this, we were able to get my shelf under 300, which is awesome. Um, and I'm hoping to get it under 250 this time. Like if I can get it down by like 50 each time I do one of these, I think that's pretty good progress. Although, I don't know, that might be hard to do. We'll see. And I wanna sort these by, hey Angelica, by date added. Oh, you made it, Rachel. I'm so glad. These are all ones that we've looked at in the past. Oh, I was talking to somebody about this book today, Transcendence. Um, I was talking to Brandy from, I think her channel is Brandy's Books, and because she's reading it right now. And she showed me um, like a little snippet from it. And I don't know, I might not want to read that book. It's I did know that it was a romance, but it's like a romance, <laughs> which I'm just not sure if I am into those kind of books. I haven't read a lot of them, so I don't know. I'm going to leave it for now, but I'm definitely second guessing my choice to want to read that. I just don't know of very many books that are set during like... Um, like the cavemen time period. I just think that's like a really cool time period that we need more books set in. Hi, Miss and Mayhem. Hi, Humaira. Hopefully I'm saying that right. Nope, we just got started. I haven't even sorted any books yet. I'm just scrolling through my shelves trying to figure out how far we got last time. Um... Pretty sure I still want to read all of these. Although, yeah, I think I looked at these. Sequels, Long Way Down, definitely looked at those. I don't remember these. Okay. I think maybe I got down to Vengeful. Okay, I'm going to start here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
and I'm going to try to go in like 10 book chunks. Oh, what are you researching Celtic myths for? Myths and mayhem. Is it for school? Wow, that's a really big ad. <laughs> okay, out of the easy. This is a Ruta Sepetis book. And I've read two Ruta Sepetis so far, and I loved them both. They were both World War II historical fictions, and this one is not. It's set in 1950 in New Orleans. The ratings do look pretty good. I feel like I definitely want to read this, but I don't know. Maybe I should put it on my probably shelf. Whoa, look at all these awards that it won. That's a lot of awards. All right, I have a feeling this is staying on my want to read shelf. Oh, Carla from Carla's Books Book Bits gave it four stars. My friend Beth gave it five. Alexa gave it four. Yeah, I think I want to read this. Oh, you're trying to write a Celtic-inspired book. I think that sounds really cool. Have I ever thought about making a five-star prediction shelf? A shelf? No, but I have thought about making the five-star prediction videos before. And then the only thing is I feel like once you make a five-star prediction video, then you have to like follow through and like actually read those books, right? <laughs> so I don't know. Um, I have thought about making that video, but I haven't actually wanted to do it yet. Hey, Samantha Leanne. Okay, so I definitely want to read this. It's not all five stars. Um, let me see, I would put it as a historical fiction, which is already done. Okay, I think this one's staying. I, I have read two Ruta Sepetis and really enjoyed it. I think I want to give this one a shot too. The Sacred Lies of Minnow Bly. I've heard really good things about this one. It's about a cult. Young Adult Contemporary Mystery. A Girl with No Hands. It's about a girl with no hands. Oh. I feel like books about cults are really interesting, but I haven't actually read any books about cults. Yeah, this one sounds really interesting. Let's look at who's read it. Oh, you think they made a show about this one? Oh, my friend Jean gave it five stars. Uh, okay, she gave it three. I'm feeling like this is a probably. I don't feel so excited about it that I need to keep it on my must read. But I'm very intrigued by this. So let's move it to my probably because I am trying to be pretty uh, selective with the things on my want to read shelf. Just because I have like over 200, almost 300 books on it right now. <laughs> um, I'm going to go ahead and, okay, it's already on being scary. It's not mostly five stars. Okay, that one's done. Piecing me together. I, the author's name sounds familiar, but I have no idea what this is. <laughs> oh, the main character's name is Jade. That's cool. Oh, it has mostly five stars with a lot of ratings. Wow. Let's make sure I mark that as mostly five stars. Oh, I already did that at some point. It's an award-winning book. Oh, wow. That's pretty good praise. Mm. 
this feels like one of those books that like I should read but that I don't necessarily ever feel like picking up. Magnificent. Oh, Rinsey only gave it three stars. Oh, my friend Shoshana. I shouldn't rate it, but she said it was so good. All right, I think, I think this is more than a maybe, but less than a want to read. So that means it's gotta go on my probably shelf. We are probably, and is it marked as contemporary? No. Oh, nonfiction. I never want to read nonfiction. <laughs> this is like one of those like life hack books I feel like I should read. I think I heard about this from olive from a book olive or maybe i heard it from sylvia oh no i think this is a book that sylvia talks about all the time it teaches you how to interact with people and i feel like i need to know that <laughs> i'm such an awkward person in real life sometimes oh roya read it i guess i did maybe hear olive talk about it but she only gave it three stars a lot of people have it marked to read. Again, a book that I feel like I should read, but will I? I don't know. I'm going to put it on my probably shelf. I feel like my probably shelf is getting a little bloated, but that could be a project we tackle later. <laughs> okay, uh, all five stars. Maybe this would be a good book for me to suggest for book club. Nonfiction and mostly five stars. Done. The Names They Give Us by Emery Lord. This is an author I've definitely heard a lot about. I haven't read any of her books. It's a contemporary. It does have mostly five stars. Mm. Lala gave it five stars. But Chelsea did not. Hmm. Let's see. Yeah, I've definitely not read any of these other books, but I've heard of them. I think this is, even though it kind of has some good ratings, oh, another five star. I kind of think this is going to be a maybe for me. Oh, it's pretty religious. The names it gave us. I don't know how I feel about that. I don't usually like to read. Oh yeah, you're right. It is, there's is church camp in here. I, hmm, I don't think I like that. <laughs> I don't usually like to read books with, that are like heavy on the religion. I'm gonna put it down on my maybe because I don't really know if I'm that interested in it, which means that I maybe wanna read it. <laughs> Um, it does have mostly five stars, so I'll go ahead and mark that and that it's a contemporary. Thanks for the heads up about the religion, even though it's in the synopsis. Obviously, I don't read the synopsis that well. Yeah, I've been meaning to read a, a book by this author, too, just because I've heard her name around. But it's like one of those things where I've heard her name a lot, so I feel like I should give her a try. But... She writes a lot of contemporary, and I don't really read a lot of contemporary, so like, should I, do I really need to give her a try? I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. Okay, How to Stop Time by Matt Haig. Definitely heard a lot about Matt Haig and this book. What does this say? The first rule is, you, is that you don't fall in love, he said. There are other rules too, but that is the main one. No falling in love, no staying in love, no daydreaming of love. If you stick to this, oh... We're talking about time traveling rules, maybe. Is it time travel? Yes, I love books about time travel. Okay, let's look and see who else has read it. Oh. 
Jen Talks Audiobooks gave it four stars. Ooh, Cindy gave it two stars. Interesting. I'm feeling like this is just a maybe, even though I'm interested in time travel. Um, it's, there's lots of books about time travel that I could pick. So I'm going to put this on maybe. My favorite time travel books. Um, you know, honestly, I don't think I've read that many either. I did read The Time Traveler's Wife and I enjoyed it. Um, but I wouldn't call it a favorite. I feel like I've read other time travel books. Oh, um, a book that I love that had time travel in it was, it's a YA fantasy that's set in like the 1920s or most of it is called the, is it The Last Magician by, hmm, I'm totally blanking, but hold on. By Lisa Maxwell, that's who it is. Um, it's the first book in a series and I haven't continued on because the the next book is out but the third book isn't coming out for a while, but that one I really love. It's magical time travel, which I think is a really cool little twist on. It's not like scientific time travel. Like, I mean, I guess there's not always, it's not always scientific because I would call the time travel's wife magical time travel too. But anyways, that one's really good. Um, definitely taking recommendations for good ones. Oh, you're right. It does sound like a forbidden romance, and I do like forbidden romance. Um, maybe, probably, maybe, probably. I'm just going to go with probably for now. The River of Ink series. I haven't heard of that one. Probably, I'm gonna go down here about time travel. So yeah, I even have a whole shelf dedicated to time travel and all alternate, alternate universes. Those are like two things that I really love to read. Um, fantasy. Well, thanks for joining while you could, Angelica. I hope you um, have a good night and have a good day at work tomorrow. Discussion on the butterfly effect in time travel. Yeah, that is a really cool topic, definitely. I don't know if I could really discuss it, but um, books where that is like a thing, I would love to read books like that. Okay, I don't know what this is doing on my want to read shelf. I have no idea where I've heard of this book. The Keeper of Lost Things. And that's why I do this because so many things have ended up on my want to read shelf that I don't even know. Somehow I added the ARC edition to my shelf. I'm going to switch that to the hardcover because I don't like that. William Morrow is a UK publisher, isn't it? Maybe not. Oh well, I'm going to switch to this edition. Okay. Debut novel, joyful discoveries. Okay, it sounds like a contemporary. But it looks like it has some magical elements. Oh, you're right. Maybe I did sign up for a giveaway. Oh, got some good reviews down here. Not a whole lot though. A lot of people have it on their to read shelf. I'm thinking this is going to be a maybe book because it doesn't even really ring a bell. I've heard of the particular sadness of lemon cake though. And of course, the Silver Linings Playbook, just because that was turned into a movie. 
Okay, so this is going on my maybe shelf. It's not mostly five stars and we're gonna mark it as contemporary. And let's move on. Okay, this is a book that I've definitely heard a lot about, but I don't actually know what it's about. I I know this probably sounds really weird, but I'm like really good at like filtering what I hear about a book. Um, like I'll listen to people talk about a book and I'll, I'll you know, take in the feeling that they're giving me as far as like if I think I'm going to like it or not. But I'm really good at like purposely forgetting the details. So I don't really know what this is about. But this first sentence is very interesting. <sighs> Orphaned, raised by wolves and the proud owner of a horned pig named Merlin. That sounds cool. Well, this sounds like magical realism. Yeah. Magical realism. Okay, rating wise, mostly five stars. Oh, my friend Leanna gave it five stars. This book follows the life of a man as seen through the eyes of those around him. That sounds intriguing. Oh, somebody gave it 1.5 stars. Katie, I don't know if anybody knows her. She used to have a channel. She's come back occasionally. I think she actually has come back to YouTube, but is incorporating other hobbies on her channel now. But interesting, she only gave it one star. Oh, White Mermaids, she gave it five. Not a lot of people have read it. Oh, my friend Katie wants to read it. Brandy wants to read it. Hey, Samantha Leanne, you want to read this. A lot of want to read. Oh, she gave it four stars. Okay. Uh, I'm still thinking this might be a maybe. Mm, I'm... Oh, thanks, Andrew. Um, oh, maybe, probably, maybe, probably. I think I'm going to put it on maybe for now. I'm kind of leaning probably, but I don't know. But I will mark it as mostly five stars, and maybe that'll help bump it up later on. And it's, I should make a magical realism shelf, because I really struggle with um, shelving those. I'm gonna do it right now. Add shelf genre magical realism. It's not one word. Do I mark it as mostly five stars? Yes. Okay. Cool. Moving on. Every Falling Star. Oh. The true story of how I survived and escaped North Korea. So I often add books like this that are about people escaping North Korea to my shelves because that's something that I'm very interested in, but I haven't read any of the books that are about that. So is this, this is a nonfiction memoir? Okay. I'm gonna put this on my probably shelf. Well, let's see who else has read it, but I'm pretty sure. For those of you who don't know, I am half Korean. My mother is Korean um, and she was born and raised in South Korea, but her father actually was 16 when he escaped from North Korea. So it you know, has some personal meaning in my life, which is why I feel like I I should and want to read these types of books, but I'm forever reading fantasy, so. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I probably or want to read. I think I'm gonna leave it on my want to read shelf. 
Um, mostly five stars though. Let's go. Mostly five stars. I am going to mark it as book club option. I'm always looking for books that I can suggest for my workbook club. Um, we only meet every other month, so we don't go th through them very quickly. But yeah, I think I do want to read this. It does sound like it would be heartbreaking. Especially since it's like, you know, a true story. Okay, Beneath the Scarlet Sky. I'm pretty sure this is historical fiction. World War II, yep. Wow, look at those ratings. That's pretty highly skewed towards five stars. And look at how many ratings there are. That's, whew, that's pretty impressive, man. Um, make sure this is marked as historical fiction, mostly five stars. Just gave it four stars. Uh oh, both Ashley and Samantha Leanne only gave it two stars. Hmm. Okay, this is gonna go on my probably shelf because I have heard of this a lot and I am interested in it, but I'm not, it's not really high on my TBR. Oh, it's based on a true story. That's cool. All right, we got through 10 books. Let's get through another 10. Oops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, The Immortalist by Chloe Benjamin. I heard a lot about this book when it first came out. Honestly, I don't really feel like I'm that interested in it. It fails my rating test. You know, I've been thinking about changing my rating test, um, which is this like made up test that I made in my head. Um, basically, the idea behind it is like, I look to see if it has more three and four star reviews versus four and five star reviews, which means that I'm basically just, because both of those things contain four stars, I'm just comparing the five star and three star bar and seeing if it has more three stars. But I feel like so many books are like that, that it's really not that helpful. And even when it like fails this rating test, it doesn't mean anything. It's just like a shelf that I can put it on so I can kind of like easily I don't know, have an idea of what the ratings look like without having to open the, the page and like visualize it. But I'm thinking that maybe I should change this to like books that have three stars as like their most high, like the most common rating instead of what I've been doing to make it a, like a little bit harder to get on that shelf. So I don't know. It's an arbitrary thing. Sometimes I wonder why I even do it, but I just explained why I do it so that I don't have to open the page to look at the ratings and just kind of have an idea of where the ratings are. If you knew the date of your death, how would you live your life? Hmm. Yeah, the ratings aren't looking great. They're just looking okay. Putting it on my maybe shelf. The 
think it's yeah, it's historical fiction. And I think I am going to officially change my rating test and only be marking things for that shelf that have mostly three stars. Okay, moving on. Sorry to disrupt the piece. This does not sound familiar at all. Yeah, Andrew, that's what I was thinking. Sounds like it's just an average book, which average books are fine, and a lot of average books end up you know, being ones that some people really like, but I want to try and read books that are better than average, or I don't want to say better, but like more to my taste than average. Dude, I've been seeing um, advertisements or trailers for this movie, and it looks really funny. I haven't read the book, but it looks funny. I do love Kate, Bil Kate Blanchett a lot, so. Okay, this is a mystery fiction, contemporary literary fiction. It did win a award, or at least was long listed. Single, childless, college educated. Oh. So she investigates her brother's, her adoptive brother's death. Ooh, Amara only gave it two stars. Allison did not finish it. Hmm. I don't know why I'm interested in this book. <laughs> I'm really not that interested. For now, like I don't like to put books on my lost interest shelf unless I like have a good reason for not wanting to read it. But look, this one has mostly three stars so I can put it on my failed rating test. I'm gonna put it on maybe and failed rating test. Chances are I'm probably never gonna read it. And failed reading test. Contemporary. If I was to, oh, it looks like the main reason why she didn't like this was just the prose, though. I was going to say, if I was to go and watch Mara's video where she talked about it, and I, after hearing her talk about it, I really felt like I wouldn't like it, then maybe I would move it. But at this point, I don't feel like I have enough information to put it on my lost interest shelf if that makes sense. Yeah, a half star option on Goodreads would be really cool. I know a lot of people really want that. Um, I have personally stopped giving half stars, at least like officially, partially because Goodreads doesn't allow it, but also just to kind of like simplify my ratings and stuff. But I know that a lot of people would prefer having a half star system. I don't think they're ever going to do it though. They've definitely posted things about why they don't have a half star rating and I don't think that they're going to change it which I think is silly. What in the heck is this book? <laughs> the cows. This cover is really interesting. I like how like the lips match the nail polish. What is this? Cows is a powerful novel about three women. Fiction, chiclet, Harper Collins. It's quite long for chiclet. Oh, maybe this is why it's on my shelf. Aoife gave it five stars. Oh, not a lot of people have read this that I know. This is going on my maybe shelf. I don't read a lot of like really feminist fiction that's like contemporary. If it's woven into like a dystopian or a fantasy, like I'm all over that. But yeah, I don't know.
does sound cool. I don't know, maybe. Definitely a maybe, and it's not mostly five stars, and it's also contemporary. The girl who wrote Loneliness. Looks like it's a Korean author. <laughs> Watching organization videos and streams always makes me want to organize. But then I think it takes too much time and I talk myself out of it. Yeah, story of my life, Myths and Mayhem. I mean, I know that I'm like organizing right now, but most of the time I am more like excited about the idea of being organized than actually organized. I mean, that's actually why I'm doing this because if I wasn't doing a live stream, then this wouldn't happen and my shelves would just get messier and messier as they have over the past few years. <laughs> Oh, the ratings aren't good though. Mostly three stars. Coming of age, set in Korea in the 70s. Hmm. Wow, <laughs> nobody from my Goodreads friends has actually read this. Where did I hear about this book? All right, it's going on maybe. And it's historical fiction. And it's, no, not mostly five stars, it's failed rating test. But is right here. Jody Picoult. Believe it or not, I have never read a Jody Picoult. Maybe that's not that hard to believe considering I don't read a lot of like contemporary. <laughs> um, but I know, so this, this is like an author that I really feel like I should try just because she has so much like popular stuff. Labor and Delivery Nurse. Oh, this is the one about the nurse who's African-American and the parents don't want her to touch their kid. And she, she's, uh, the baby goes into cardiac distress while the nurse is the only one in there. And so she performs C CPR and is charged with crime. I definitely want to read this one. I have thought this one sounded so good and it's mostly five stars. <laughs> yeah, you're definitely not the only one who hasn't read a Jodi Picoult. Oh, I actually think her last name is Picot. Like, I think, I don't know if it is French, but like, I think you don't say the last couple of letters. Um, five stars, five stars. Oh, Katie only gave it three stars, four stars, five stars. Yeah, I think I definitely, ooh, lots, lots of high ratings. Definitely want to read this. Okay. And the, Considered historical fiction, contemporary. I mean, it's kind of historical, right? It's got to be. Oh, maybe not. White supremacist. I was thinking this was set, like, historically. <laughs> that Disney chick. Good. I'm glad that this is motivating you to organize your good shelves. That's part of the reason why I do it. I mean, the main reason why I do these is because I actually do need to organize my good read shelf. Um, but if I can motivate other people to do it, if I can get input from other people who have read some of these books, then, you know, even better. Okay, want to read. This is mostly five stars and contemporary. All right, yeah, I definitely want to read that. What is this book? I've been, I have to say, ever since I started doing these live streams, now that I know that I'm actually going through all of these books one by one, I've been a lot better about not just like randomly adding books on my want to read shelf. Now when I'm adding books, I'm very purposefully making sure I add them to like my maybe or probably shelf. Um, 
Whereas before, it was more of like a theoretical, like one day I'm going to have to organize it. So sometimes I would just be lazy and just add it to the shelf. Um, but I've been a lot better about it ever since I started doing these live streams because I know that I'm going to have to actually like look at them one by one. It's so easy to let your Goodreads shelves get messy because you just hear about so many books and it's like, oh, well, that sounds shiny and new and interesting. I think I want to read that. But in, the, in reality, you have so many books you already want to read that it's like, is it really a book that you're actually going to get to? I don't know. What is this about? Looks like it's fantasy because it's set in a world inspired by the conflicts and dramas of Renaissance Europe. Okay. I feel like this author sounds familiar. Wait, what are the ratings again? Mostly four stars. Historical fantasy. All right, who did I hear about this from? Oh, Caitlin. Heavy influence from the Ottoman Empire, Venice. I do really like like historical fantasy. Okay, this review's really long. How do I less? All right, so and then Colonati DNF'd it. Slow moving, lots of subtlety. Okay. Then more reasons? Nope. I mean, it sounds interesting, but because I don't know that much about it, it's going to go on my maybe shelf. And it will be shelved as fantasy. And moving on. I do like that it's a standalone. Not a lot of fantasy standalones out there. Mm. This one. This one's going to be a toss-up between want to read and probably. So I haven't read any Catherine N. Valente, but I definitely want to. I've heard so much about her books before. His ratings are pretty good. Not mostly five stars, but pretty darn close. Space opera mystery set in Hollywood. That sounds so cool. <laughs> I love alternate universe things too, alternate history. I've heard a lot of things about this book. Oh no, Mara DNF'd it at 150 pages. Caitlin gave it three stars. Oh, just shot and DNF'd it for now. Okay, four star, four star, four star. Okay, that makes me feel better about putting this on probably. If it was like a bunch of five stars from people that I like really trusted, then might have stayed on my want to read. You hear that she has a very polarizing writing style. I don't think I've actually heard that before, but that's good to know. Um, I am very interested in, I feel like the girl who circumnavigated Fairyland well, it's like a middle grade, right? So I feel like that's very different from other stuff that she's written, I think. What else has she written? This book, Deathless, I've heard about. Uh, that's a series. What's this? I don't think I've ever heard of that one. Anyways. Okay, probably 
not mostly five stars, and it'll be science fiction. Okay. Genre, science fiction. Cool. Okay, Killers of the Flower Moon. I want to read this. I've heard about this one a bunch of times, and I think it sounds really interesting. It's a nonfiction book. True crime. That's what I was trying to think of. <laughs> Look at all these awards. That's cool. Oh, Samantha Leanne gave it five stars. Yeah, Caitlin only gave it three. Wow, Teresa gave it five, and she does not give those out easily. Yeah, I, oh, what did Mara give it? Three stars. Julie gave it four stars. Yeah, I want to read this. And... Non-fiction. Cool. Good to go. The Changeling. Killers is a crazy story for something I had never heard of. I, I hadn't heard of it until I heard people talking about this book, so I would agree with that. Um, Moody Bookworm. Yeah, I definitely think I'm going to read that. Okay, this is a book that I feel like is going to stay on my want to read shelf. I feel like I really want to read this. <laughs> I've heard a lot about it. It's got some like horror elements, right? Maybe? Yeah, it's the second shelf that it's on. Whoa, look at all these awards. That's cool. And the ratings, oh, mostly four stars. Okay. Four stars, four stars, four stars. Oh no, Lily, you're trying to organize yourself, but you keep adding the books that I'm talking about. I'm so sorry. Hmm, I didn't know Sean had a blog. Oh, one of my friends is currently reading it. Yeah, I want to read this book. I don't actually even know what it's about. Yeah, I don't care what it's about. I want to read it. Um, should I put it as fantasy? Okay. I mean, is it really fantasy? New York City. I mean, I guess it's fantasy because of like the changeling element. Oh goodness. Genres are hard, guys. <laughs> it's one of my struggles. I never know how to I mean, <laughs> okay, I'm going to mark it as theme scary because it is shelved as horror for a lot of people. It's not really fantasy, but it's not really magical realism either. Uh, I'm going to skip the genre shelf on this one. I try to always put it on a genre shelf, but like, I'm struggling. I mean, I guess it... Most, it's not really fantasy though. I kind of want my fantasy shelf to be like high fantasy where it's like set in a different world. Oh, whatever. I'll put it on my fantasy shelf. I'm being too picky. <laughs> Another book about escaping from North Korea. like I don't know which of these I want to read first I guess I've only come across two but there's also another one that I had come up in a previous um, Goodreads organization I think oh yeah this is about someone who's half Japanese
let's see who's read it yeah this is going on a probably shelf and that was mostly five stars Okay. All right, we did another 10. Woohoo! All right, let's do 10 more. Oh, I'm excited about this one coming up. Okay. What to say next? Mm, why is this on my want to read shelf? I have heard of it. Young adult contemporary romance. When do I ever want to read those? Even Chelsea only gave it three and a half stars. Oh, well, maybe this is why it's on my shelf. One of the top three books she's read in her life. And it is a little bit, it's been a while since she said that, but. Hmm. So much more than a fluffy YA contemporary, huh? I like the sound of that. Oh, and Jen Talks Audiobooks gave it five stars. All right. I'm starting to be convinced. Okay, I'm going to put it on my probably shelf. Probably. And contemporary. Oh, it's good on audiobook. I'm sure that I heard that from Jen Reads Audiobooks. Uh, what is this book? <laughs> Mistakes I Made at Work. Hmm. I thought maybe I heard about this from her. She likes to read all of, from a book, Olive likes to read like professional development books sometimes. And sometimes I think they sound interesting, even though I never read books like that. Okay. Oh, the ratings aren't great. They're okay. Maybe. I don't, I really don't read a lot of self-help books. Okay, I would love to know if anybody has actually read this book. Um, so I read a Gabrielle Zevin for the first time earlier this year. That was um, The Storied Life of A.J. Fickery, and I loved it. But I'm not sure of any of her other books. I really haven't heard that much about her other books. Oh, DNF this one because it was super cliche. Good to know, good to know. I was nominated for a bunch of stuff. Three stars, three stars. Hmm. All right, I think, well, those are a lot of 
four and five stars, but these are a lot of people that I don't like actually know. For a long time, I really didn't like accept friend requests from people unless they were people who like I knew their reading tastes and like, you know, that reviewed books and stuff so that I could look at the section and really know like the people who had rated them. But lately I've been getting a lot of friend requests from just like people who found my channel and stuff and I didn't want to not friend them. So some of these people, I don't actually like know their reading taste very well. So just because a bunch of these people gave it five stars, it doesn't mean that much to me. It's because I don't know their reading taste. All right, I'm gonna put it down on maybe. And yeah, uh, contemporary. Let's put it on the contemporary shelf. And move on. Anything you do say. So this is not ringing a bell. Came out 2017. It's a thriller. I like the sound of that. Nobody's read it. But I know. Hmm. All right, let's see what it's about. Oh, I remember hearing about this book. Who talked about it? Maybe it was April since it's on her shelf. She hasn't read it yet. But this is about someone who um, she thought someone was following her. And so she turns around and pushes this guy down the stairs. And like, I don't know, it doesn't say that he dies. But I feel like maybe he dies or he gets really hurt. But like, we don't know if he was actually following her, if she just thought he was. And then she has to like figure out, I don't know, what to do with the rest of her life. Which I'm sure isn't exactly what it's about. But... Um, yeah, I remember hearing about this. I'm still going to put it on maybe just because I don't know anybody that's read it. I don't know that much about it. I don't know. But I remember thinking that it sounded interesting. It does have pretty good ratings. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't feel strongly enough to put it on my probably shelf. Um, but I will do things. Theme scary. So another thing that I'm thinking about changing is I've always had this theme scary shelf, which doesn't really make sense, but I kind of, um, I don't have a horror genre or like a mystery thriller genre shelf. I've just kind of been lumping those together and putting them on a like scary theme shelf. <laughs> doesn't make any sense. Uh, and I might end up making genre shelves for that. I got to think of like, I don't know, a better genre system, I think. So basically my theme shelves, the idea behind that was that they were going to be shelves for like, not necessarily genres, but like um, things that are in books, like not tropes, but you know, like I have time travel and alternate universes. Those are not necessarily genres, but they're like things that happen in books that I like. And so that was kind of the idea behind the theme scary shelf. And then it kind of turned into all of my horror and mystery thriller books in, in one shelf <laughs> because sometimes it's hard to like draw a line between horror and mystery thriller so I didn't want to have to like try to separate them I don't know it's kind of a mess <laughs> I'm not gonna make that decision right now though <laughs> okay maybe moving on the kitchen house I've heard a lot about this book it's historical fiction right yep Historical fiction. When is it set? Hmm. It doesn't exactly say. Hmm. 
April gave it five stars. One of the best books she's read this year, in 2016. There's a sequel. It's not marked as having a sequel. Yeah, a lot of people really enjoyed it. Oh, Katie only gave it three stars. Mm. I feel like this is still a maybe book, even though it's kind of like leaning probably, but not quite there. Sometimes I feel so crazy when I say stuff like that. Like, how can I have such a big spectrum of books that I want to read going from like, just to even say that I have a book that is like a maybe want to read, but leaning probably like that just sounds ridiculous, <laughs> but it's true. <laughs> Apparently it's good on audiobook and I want to make sure I mark it as mostly five stars. Cool. Pachinko. This is also a probably book. Or I don't want to say also a probably book because the last book was not probably, but I think this is a probably book. Oh. Good, good. Pretty good. Yeah, this is a probably book. And it's mostly five stars. TBR probably. And um, what would, is it historical fiction? Yep. Historical fiction and mostly five stars. Oh wow, it's already been an hour. Uh, this book. Hmm. Oh, you just got Pachingo from a library sale? Um, it's like a family saga about a I think it's about a Korean family that lives in Japan. Could be wrong, but it has something to do with Korea. So the main reason why I'm sort of like feeling like not reading this is because of the whole AJ Finn, Daniel Mallory drama. I know it got pretty good reviews. I just feel like there's so many mystery fillers out there that I can read. Hmm. Maybe I should read it though. So many people really liked it. You think it was more for inexperienced mystery thriller readers? I gotta say I like mystery thrillers, but I can't really say that I'm an experienced one. So maybe I would still like it. Oh, there was drama about the author of the book. Um, I think you could look it up. I'm trying to I I'm trying to remember exactly what it was and I don't want to like misspeak and have it recorded, although I guess no not that many people watch this type of video anyways. Oh, I'm so torn. Yeah. I think I'm gonna put it on my probably shelf. I'm too intrigued. So many people really like, I didn't realize, oops, why did I just put it on my pods shelf? That's not what I meant to do. 
um, probably shelf. Uh, Christina said he faked a chronic illness or pretended a parent did. Yeah, I feel like he pretended his mom died of cancer or something. Like he told people that. I don't know. It seems like he might be like a pathological liar or something, but I don't know. He might also just like have some sort of like mental illness stuff going on. I don't know. There was a huge um, article that came out about it, and a lot of people were talking about it. Um, I think it came out like a little while after the book had already come out. But yeah, there was some drama there. And I'm not saying that like I 100% like don't want to support him or do. Like that's kind of the thing is that like I don't really know um, how I feel about it. And I'm not like super educated about it. I just know that there was drama about it. Um, and there were definitely people who were like, I don't want to read that book or I'm not supporting this book because of that. Some people were even saying like his publisher should like – let him go or something but I don't know there was drama I don't know how I feel about it which is partially why I'm not sure if I want to read this but it does sound really good a lot of people have given it a lot of good reviews so for now I'll put it on my probably shelf oh you did enjoy it Oh, you enjoyed the audiobook, Lily. Thank you for telling me. I will put it on my audiobook shelf because I love listening to audiobooks. You know what I'm going to do? <laughs> Just after I talked all about this theme scary shelf and how like I was uncertain about it, but I wasn't going to do anything about it, I'm going to do something about it. I'm creating a genre horror, mystery, thriller shelf. Let's just make a shelf. I mean, it's, that's basically what it is. Actually, what I should do, instead of making a new shelf, because that's basically what most of these are, is I should rename it. How do I, let's see, I'm gonna open. I don't wanna like lose my spot right here, so open a new tab. Yeah, one person reading a book isn't going to make an impact on something like that. You're right, um, Christina. Let's go to my books. Oh, Lala just rated a book five stars. That doesn't happen very often. And then, what is it? Uh, there's an edit shelf button, right? Yep. Rename genre horror, oops, horror mystery thriller. Sticky. And then what are these sticky? Okay. But I do want all my shelves to be sortable. And then, no, I don't want Rex. Sorry guys, I'm doing a little bit of cleanup. Um, if you guys aren't familiar with this screen, I do talk about it a little bit in my uh, Goodreads organization video, but also if you just go to edit shelves, it tells you on this like column over here what each of these things are. So I just don't want um, to get recommendations based off of some of these things. Oh no, things are fine. 
Like I want to get recommendations based off books that I've actually read. Cool. Done. Okay. Back to the woman in the window. Probably um and yeah, okay. Close this book. Um I know I own one of her books. But it's not this one, right? Because if I own it, I have an owned TBR shelf. Yeah, I have this. So I think this one I'm also going to put on my TBR series shelf. I don't know. I, I haven't heard a lot about her books in a while, but for a little while, especially her Air Awakened series was getting a lot of buzz. This is an indie author who's been pretty popular for an indie author. Okay, so I'm moving this to my TBR series shelf because I'm pretty sure I want to read this series. Or at least I want to read one of her series. I guess it's more realistic that I'll read her other series first because I actually own one of those books. Let's see, who else has read this? Melanie gave it four stars. Uh-oh. A one-star review. Four stars. Four stars. Francesca gave it five. Yeah, it gets pretty good reviews. She's pretty popular. Okay. The Lion Game. So I haven't read any of Ruth Ware before, but I'm very interested in reading some of her books. I don't know if this is really one to start with. Mystery thriller. For now, I think I'm going to put it on my maybe shelf because I do want to try Ruth Ware, but I haven't really decided where I want to start with her because she's got so many books. Uh oh, Carla gave it one star. All right, I'm going to put it on my maybe shelf. So I need to decide where I want to start with Ruth Ware, and then from there, once I've read a book or two, I can decide if I actually want to read this. And the ratings. Yeah, she's got a lot of books that are pretty popular. Let's see, there's uh, The Woman in Cabin 10. Actually, this is probably the one that I would start with. But there's also In a Dark, Dark Wood, Turn of the Key I've heard a lot about. The Death of Mrs. Westaway is the one that um, is her most recent release. She's got a lot of books that have come out. Okay, so I want this on my maybe shelf. You're starting with Turn of the Key because it's Lala's favorite. That's cool. Yeah, she, I don't know, Lala has weird taste in books though. So I don't always know what I'll think of ones that she likes. <laughs> but she does read a lot of thrillers, so I feel like she's got a good, um, like, good taste in thrillers. Um, yeah, okay, we're good for this one. Oh yeah, Bonfire by Kristen Ritter. This one I feel like I've heard mixed things about. Kristen Ritter I think is an actress. Yeah, Jessica Jones. But I feel like I heard people say that this book was, oh yeah, Katie gave it four stars. Like, I think I remember hearing people say that this book was better than they were expecting when it was written by, like, an actress. Oh, Rachel's read this. So, so average is what Rachel says. 
Okay. Yeah, I'm not really like super excited about it. Mari gave it three stars. A lot of three stars. Excuse me. All right. <laughs> the ratings are pretty average too. <laughs> Maybe, and what is it like mystery thriller? Yeah. The plot is so similar to other, or the plot is similar to so many other thrillers. I don't think I've actually read a thriller with this plot before. What's a, yeah, you hear the average comment a lot. Okay, that was gonna be my next question, Rachel. You totally read my brain. I was gonna ask you what you would um, recommend that has a similar plot to this, and you said Sharp Objects. I will definitely read Sharp Objects. All right, so another 10. That means we've got through 30 so far, and my goal was to like go through 50 books, I think. So yeah, um, I don't think I can do that in 10 minutes, but I should be able to do that before it's been two hours. So it will be, you know, in between an hour and a half and two hours, which I think is a good amount of time for this. <laughs> yeah, same wavelength. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. I already know this is going to stay on my want to read list. I haven't read any Joe Hill yet. I don't know if this is where I'm going to start with him. I actually think that I'm going to read one of his other books this Christmas. I'm totally blanking on the name of it right now, but actually, I bet if I look down here, I'll remember. Nosferatu. I think I'm going to re read this one in December because there's like Christmas land or something in it. Um, but I've heard good things about this one, too. I don't actually know what it's about, of course. I never know what any books are about. <laughs> oh, you're going to read it soon? Cool. Heart-shaped box received in the mail. Contains the suit of a dead man, but also his vengeance-obsessed spirit. That sounds cool. It's a ghost story. Heart shaped box isn't as good as Nosferatu. Interesting. I almost feel like I should start with the one that's less good <laughs> instead of like really liking something and then going backwards. I don't know. Yeah, I think this is going to stay on my want to read shelf. A lot of people just have it marked as to read. Okay. Want to read, and it's going to be, it's already on my horror mystery thriller. See, that was, I'm glad I thought to rename that shelf instead of creating a new genre shelf because that shelf already had like 200 books on it. So yeah, that was really smart of me. I'm glad I thought of that. Good job, Jade. Um, I don't think, oh, that's weird. It's still showing a theme scary shelf. It shouldn't. I wonder if that's a little bit of a bug or something. Okay. It's not mostly five stars and it doesn't fail my rating test and I don't need to do anything else to it. Oh, this looks like a horror book that I don't remember. Horror. Oh, I've been read by 2,000 people. Mm, scary dolls. All right. Four stars, four stars. Marked it as to read. Yeah, I'll probably put this on. <laughs> I was wondering if you had read this one, Rachel, and I obviously I didn't see your name down there. 
but yeah, um, maybe. It does look like it fails my rating task because it has mostly three stars. That's not promising, but again, I don't put a whole lot of weight on that. It's just like a way to eyeball it. <laughs> I don't think I've actually read that many stories with a scary doll. Um, I did just read that Anya Allborn book, I Call Upon Thee, and there was like a scary doll in it, but it's not like, it doesn't really describe the doll that much, and it's not a big part of it. So I wouldn't really call it a scary doll um, book necessarily. Scary dolls in movies are pretty creepy though. I'm Born by Jeff Vandermeer. I need to read me some Jeff Vandermeer at some point. I don't know if this is the one that I would start with, but is this a completed series? I think it's funny that scary dolls are um, a topic that we're talking about in the chat. Oh, this is, I wonder if this is actually coming out this year because I don't feel like I've heard anybody talk about it. So what I do with like series that are not completed is I have a whole shelf called unfinished series. And then I put it there and then I don't think about it until the series is over. Yeah, I know Thomas liked it. Um, also, Sam from Thoughts on Tomes really liked it. And I'm sure it's a book where, like, even though it's the start of a series, you don't necessarily have to, like, read them together, especially if they're being published two years apart, I feel like. But still. Um, yeah, I, it's, like, weird science fiction. And I have yet to actually read any weird science fiction, so I don't know what I'll think of it. Oh, Solitaire Kid, I'm sorry that you missed the beginning of the stream. Um, so I tried to post about it ahead of time on my Instagram and my Twitter. It was only like earlier today that I did. And um, I do have it set so that YouTube will like show the thumbnail 24 hours before. I don't know, if I decide to do it early enough, I'll do it like 48 hours before so you can like add a reminder and stuff. But yeah. Uh, maybe if you follow me on Twitter and Instagram or Instagram, whatever, you know, is your uh, preference, maybe you'll get warnings about them ahead of time. Yeah, Sam from Thoughts on Tones called it New Weird. And it's just like I haven't really read anything like that, so I'm not sure if I would like it. Although I do think that Wilder Girls might kind of qualify as New Weird just because it sort of reminded me of Annihilation, the movie, and it was blurred by Jeff Vandermeer. So like maybe that would fit, and I didn't like that book, so I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't think, oh, I wanna put it on my science fiction shelf though. Okay, um, this is a contemporary. Uh, Solitaire Kid, um, if you go to the description box, there is a video that I did a long time ago. I apologize, it's kind of old and awkward, but I explained my shelving system, but basically what I'm doing right now is I'm going through my want to read shelf and just um, basically I've added a bunch of things on this want to read shelf that I don't know if I actually want to read. I kind of I have a tiered system um, and I have shelves that are like maybe you want to read and probably want to read and I'm kind of like moving things off of my want to read shelf onto those shelves um, and deciding how how much I really want to read them just because there's so many books that I'm interested in. It's like a Way for me to prioritize what I'm reading, basically. Okay, so this is a contemporary book. 
that I heard about from my friend Karen. She gave it four and a half stars and she really loved it. Um, who else has read it? Hannah. A bunch of people haven't wanted us to read. Oh, Aoife, Anita. This is honestly the type of book that I don't often read, but I just had got really interested in it based on Karen's like review of it. I'm still going to put this on my maybe just because I'm not that excited about it. And I'll put it on contemporary. All right, Misery by Stephen King. I'm feeling like this is a probably shelf book. I, I, I do want to read more Stephen King. I'm not really sure where I want to start. I think I want to read Pet Cemetery next by him. Misery is one of his best, Rachel. I also just mentioned Pet Cemetery, but I think because of the delay, you haven't seen that yet. So I think you're talking about Misery. Oh, Pet Cemetery. Just kidding. <laughs> but you also like this one. Murphy really liked it. Oh, you just read Pet Cemetery, Diana? That's cool. Yeah, a lot of people have liked this. Maybe I should keep it on my want to read shelf. I'm gonna put it on probably, cause I, like, I really think I'm probably going to read it. <laughs> if that makes any sense. All right, cool. Pet Cemetery and then Misery, got it. Um, it is mostly five stars. So this is like a probably leaning want to read book, if that makes any sense. Like it'll probably move up to my want to read shelf within the next year is my guess. Um, what am I doing? Sorry, got distracted. Okay, mostly five stars. Cool, moving on. I don't know this book at all. What is this book? Fantasy, young adult, maybe even middle grade. Nobody I know has read it. <laughs> How do things like this end up on my want to read shelf? <laughs> Interesting. Okay. It is a standalone. It is mostly five stars. I feel like I've heard of this somewhere, but I like only vaguely. Okay, it doesn't matter. It's going to go on my maybe shelf because I don't know enough about it. It's maybe, it's fantasy, and it's mostly five stars. Okay. Oh, this book. This is a Net Galley book that I never read. <laughs> and I'm gonna put it on my probably shelf. It's an Edelweiss book that I never read. Yeah, nobody's read it. <laughs> um, it's like a Cinderella retelling or something. And I usually like retellings which is why I requested it on Edelweiss. Okay, probably fantasy. Cool, moving on. Crota, I feel like I recently heard about this book. It's like it's a mystery thriller. Body count increases. Oh. Mythical creature underground labyrinth. That sounds interesting. Won the Bram Stoker for the best first novel in 96. So this is a horror book. 
Oh, she enjoyed the audiobook, so I need to make sure I mark it as audio. Yeah, it says they figure a bear attacked him, except that bears aren't indigenous to the area. Crota, a great beast of legend, has reawakened. Interesting. That sounds really interesting. Oh, do I want it on my want to read shelf? I feel like I kind of do. Mass market paperback. I don't want the mass market paperback version. Kindle. I usually go for the hardcover, but this hardcover doesn't have a picture. Oh, it was just republished this year. Interesting. Mm, I'm going to switch to this edition. I wonder if the author is Native American. Hmm. Is this an indie published book? I'm so confused. Author has a bunch of books, but he doesn't have a, like, um... Description, which is kind of weird. Okay, I'm putting this on probably. It definitely sounds really interesting, but I just don't know that much about it. Audiobook. And genre horror mystery thriller. Cool. I don't know why this theme scary shelf is still showing up because I already renamed it. And it's already like this book was already marked as this which means that I previously marked it as theme scary it's kind of weird must be a bug okay moving on trees can't tell jokes but they can certainly tell stories I think this is like a middle grade isn't it yeah middle grade fantasy I enjoy middle grade fantasy, but I haven't read it in a really long time. I need to change that. I've heard of her book, Crenshaw. I feel like I've also heard of the one and only Ivan. I haven't read any Christina Applegates. Unfortunately, it's going to be a maybe. I don't know why I said unfortunately. I just feel bad when I only maybe want to read a book, but it's good for me because I'm trying to clean off my shelves. Oh, Texas Blue Bonnet Award nominee. Okay, I have a middle grade shelf, so I'm going to put it on that. Um, it's fantasy and it's middle grade already on my middle grade shelf and is it mostly five stars it is cool test of the road I feel like I've heard a lot about this one <laughs> only a maybe book I know I feel bad but sometimes I, I've said this before, but like sometimes I read things straight off of my maybe shelf. Like it doesn't always have to move all the way up the hierarchy for me to read a book. Because sometimes I'm a movie reader and I just pick random things. Uh, it says it's a series, but it doesn't look like there's any more books. So I'm not going to consider it to be a series. It's a YA. It's about dragons. I like dragons. I really haven't heard that much about this. Oh, look at that. It's a lot of four and five stars. Okay, who's read this? My friend Mariah gave it four stars. Bethany gave it four stars. That's positive. I think that is second in series but they are companions oh but they're not linked together here that's weird it does say though that 
related world books, the Serafina books, which I think is interesting. I do I have this on a shelf? I'm pretty sure I do. I think there are a lot of books that have dragons in them, but um, we just don't know of all of them. Yeah, this is on my series shelf. Because I've heard a lot about this one. So it's in a related world. Anyways, let's see. Three stars, four stars. G, Y, fantasy, and diverse representation. A DNF. Four stars or three stars? Hmm. Maybe. I'll put it on my maybe shelf. Is it actually? No, it's mostly four stars. Okay. TBR, maybe. Fantasy. And that's it. Yeah, I really haven't heard that much about Serafina or this book. I remember when I was in middle school, I read some books by Anne McCaffrey, some of the, what is the name of that series? She's got a huge world and series all about dragons, but it's also actually like science fiction because it's set on a different planet or something. I really loved those books, but I haven't read them in a long time. And I don't think I got even close to reading all of them because there's a ton set in that world. The Dragon Riders of Pern series, that's the one I'm thinking of. I remember really liking those. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yes, Dragon Riders of Pern. Oh, this is by that same author of another self-help book that I came across earlier today. Who read this? Oh, Rachel, you actually read this book. Practical advice backed by scientific studies. You've read practically all of Anne McCaffrey. She has a huge backlist. That's amazing. Oh, this book has a lot more good reviews than I thought it would. Uh-oh. Why do I have a spinning wheel? There we go. All right. I'm putting it on my probably shelf. More than 80? That's insane by one author. That's a lot. I mean, like, insane in a good way. Like, I admire you, Moody Bookworm. Okay. Probably and nonfiction and mostly five stars and audiobook. Nonfiction, mostly five stars. <laughs> yeah, it probably should go on my must-read shelf, but I don't know. I just never pick up nonfiction, so for now it's going on my probably. And because I have it shelved as nonfiction, anytime I'm actually in the mood for nonfiction, I will see it. All right, multiple people said they liked um, the audiobook version, so that's good. Oh, wow. A lot of you guys have read this book. <laughs> cool. All right. I'm kind of, now this is a probably leaning towards want to read because you guys in the chat have talked it up. I was just on a kick with this guy, huh? Who's read this book? Science of Productivity. <laughs> Read it. <laughs> oh, 
Rachel, you didn't like this one quite as much. I feel like this would be a really helpful book. Oh. I didn't know you could embed a YouTube video. That's cool, Desiree. All right, this one I'm also gonna put on my probably shelf. Probably nonfiction. All right, good to know. Moving on. Um, if you don't know the words, this is like a literary fiction book that I've heard so much about, but do I ever read literary fiction? No, not really. Maybe it's not really literary fiction, but I kind of feel like that's like the circle of booktube that has read it. Um. Oh yeah, I remember April has talked about this book a bunch of times. Mm, but Olive only gave it two stars. Interesting, and most people just want to read it. Mm. Oh, look at those ratings. Okay, it's going on my maybe. I've heard a lot about it, but I'm not super excited about it. So maybe and historical fiction. Apparently it's good on audiobook. Okay. Mm, I think this is a World War II. Yeah, World War II book. Historical fiction, World War II. Um, okay, April only gave it three stars. Okay, one star. Well, that's not too promising from people that I know. It does have pretty mixed reviews here. How many hours does everyone here read in general? Do you mean like hours a day or like a week? I usually try to read for 30 minutes to an hour a day during the week. On the weekends, I try to read for at least like an hour. Um, but it kind of just depends on my mood. Lately, I've kind of been in a reading slump, guys. I haven't, I've, yeah, I haven't finished any books in August and it's what, August 13th? So halfway through the month that I haven't finished anything, but um, I am reading again, just not very much right now. So this is going on my maybe shelf. And I guess historical fiction, and that's it. Unraveling Oliver. This is a mystery thriller. April gave it four stars. A bunch of people that marked to read. I feel like I've heard about this book. I mean, obviously I've heard about it because I put it on my shelves. Okay, a man beeps, beats his wife and puts her in a coma. Interesting. Mm, maybe. Tooth and Nail. This does not look familiar at all. Oh, but it's about a plague. I like the sound of that. Oh, is this a zombie book? Hmm. 
Many of the victims become rabid and violent. Heck yes, but are easily controlled, that is, until so many are infected that they begin to run amok. Yeah, that sounds like a zombie book. Yep. Where did I hear about this from? I don't know. <laughs> um... Wait, Craig DeLuey. I feel like I've heard of this author recently. I feel like this was talked about, he was talked about on Rachel's podcast or, um, fiction. I think maybe somebody recommend, like someone in my comment section recommended this book to me. Oh, that's where I've heard the name Stuff for the Children. Yeah, that one's on my probably shelf because that's the one that I think was talked about on the podcast. Okay, interesting, interesting. Um, I'm going to put it on my maybe shelf. That's something that I could have like a theme tag for, zombies. I mean, it's not really a theme, but like, I don't know what else to call it. I mean, it is kind of a genre, like a subgenre. I don't know. Okay, maybe. And what are your ratings like? Ratings are kind of mixed. I do like that it's um a standalone. Okay, I'm gonna move on. Speaking of zombies, yeah, I must have been adding a couple of zombie books because these were right next to each other. Uh, do I actually wanna read this? I don't know. I kind of wanted to read this at the time that I, um, okay, fall of 2018, I was participating in NaNoWriMo and I was writing a zombie book and I thought this would be good like book research. Unless you just really, really love all things zombies. Don't bother picking this up. I do love zombies, but I, I like plot and zombies. And I feel like this has no plot. So I'm not going to take it off, but I'll put it on maybe. Because maybe one day I'll feel like reading this. Or maybe one day I'll feel like starting to write that book again. I did actually already write all of it. Like I won NaNo when I did it. Um... But that book needs a lot of work and a lot of research. <laughs> um, I almost want to make this like nonfiction, but that's not really true. How oh, genre? I, I mean, it's not really. I mean, it is a zombie. Well, oh, genres are hard. <laughs> Zombies are probable, and I don't know how I feel about it. Yeah, that's funny. I mean possible there's definitely like parasites that do zombie like things to insects and stuff which is so gross to think about um I guess I'll I don't want to put it on my horror mystery thriller shelf because I don't think it'll be that scary to read I'm I'm just not gonna put it on a genre shelf even though the like um perfectionist in me wants to put it on a genre shelf. I'm just not going to do it. <laughs> okay. Another Stephen King. Do people have opinions on this Stephen King? I really haven't heard that much about the Stephen King. No, why is it on the mass market paperback? I don't like that. Yeah. Did this really come out in 2006? So it's like one of his newer books. Interesting. Okay, who's read this? Mm, that's a lot of, ooh, a lot of three stars, two stars, one stars. All right, 
playing this on my maybe. Not really that interested in it. There's definitely other Stephen King I want to read first. Cell has a super weird concept, which is partly why I haven't read it yet. And the ratings are pretty bad, or at least not bad, but like they're evenly split up, I guess is what I mean to say. Um, but I will put it on my horror shelf. Okay, next one. I don't remember this book at all. Oh, a student runs away with her teacher, thinking he's the love of her life. Interesting. Oh, and then he, the same teacher, gets involved with another teenager. Interesting. Mystery thriller fiction. I feel like I've heard of C.L. Taylor. This book, I think I've heard of, The Missing. Has anybody read this? Nope. Yeah, it's definitely going on my maybe shelf. The ratings aren't bad, though. A lot of four and five stars. Um, maybe. Mystery thriller. Mm, an anthology. This doesn't look familiar at all. Oh, this is about race. New emerging and established Asian diasporic writers. Sounds like heavy stuff. Short story anthology, which I like never read. Or it's like one of those things I feel like I should want to read, but I don't know if I really do. I'll put this on my maybe shelf. Is it nonfiction? No. No, it was listed as not fiction. Mm. Only by 16 people, though. I don't know how accurate that really is. Oh, am I not friends with David? I should fix that. That must be who I heard of this book from. David is a booktuber, um, the Poptimus, and I really like his channel. Even though he has completely different reading tastes from me. He makes great videos. Okay, maybe, all right. I wanted to do 10 more, but it's already been two hours, so we gotta call it a day. I guess I only got through 40 books. But, okay, this is my favorite part. At the end of all of this, I'm gonna refresh this page and see how many books I actually moved off of my want to read shelf. I feel like I didn't keep very many on my want to read shelf this time. So I feel like it's gonna be good. Okay, so it's gonna go from 296 to 252. So that's like 40. I'm so bad at math in my head. 252 to 296. So 44 books. That's pretty good. My list went down by 44 books. That makes me really happy. All right. All right. Thanks everybody who joined me today, or if you're watching this on the replay and have left comments letting me know what you thought of any of these books, I really appreciate it. Um, sorry, forget to look at the camera because I'm mostly looking at the screen during most of the live stream. Uh, I, I'm gonna be doing these every month, so I guess I will see you guys next month when I do the next one. Um, have a good night and a good rest of your week, guys. Bye. Stop streaming.